Hello, and welcome to Wild McLean's Tech Tip Videos. I'm Brian, and today we will be taking a look at our high efficiency boilers and the high temp limit error code. Now, we basically have three different styles of controllers on our condensing boilers, but finding the solution to the issue is the same for all three. It doesn't matter if it is the ultra style control found on Ultra, Evergreen, WM97, or Eco, our Aqua Balance boiler, or the Ecotech boiler. High temperature faults are almost always traced to one simple problem, lack of flow. The concept is very basic. If you move enough water through the boiler, it won't overheat. If you are dealing with an Ultra, WM97, Eco, or Ecotech, the first place to start is in boiler settings. We need to make sure the high limit temp is set to 200 degrees. Some people set this to their target temperature, and this causes the boiler to lock out on high temp. This is not the way to set these boilers up. The high limit temp should always be 200 degrees. Keep in mind, there are two other error codes that go along with high temp limit. If you see temp rise too quickly or supply 58 greater than return, these are soft lockouts and they are telling you the boiler was on its way to overheating. You can treat these just like high temp limit. Now, there are many reasons why water may not be moving properly through the system. First, ensure the system has been properly purged of air. If there is air in the system, the circulators are not able to push water through the circuit. Next, make sure all the proper valves are open. So that brings us to the circulators. The first thing you will want to look at is if the proper circulators are turned on. The display interface on these boilers allow you to select which circulators are turned on for each priority, with the exception of Aqua Balance, which does not have circulator control. Now, as we can see here on our ultra style control, we can turn each pump on or off in each priority. This allows maximum flexibility for setup, but can also lead to some confusion. Here we see the menu from the ultra boiler and the circulator options. Looking at priority one, there is just the number one pump selected. That would be normal for a system with a domestic water tank connected. We normally just run the DHW pump directly to the tank. For heating priorities, you can see we would normally run pumps two and three, which would be the boiler pump and the system pump. Now, each application will be different, and each of our control systems are slightly different, as you can see here. But the key is to be sure the proper pumps are being energized through the control. Once we have determined the correct pumps are energized, we need to look at the functionality of the pumps. The circulators in hydronic systems are generally considered one of the weakest links. These devices run at high temperatures and are subjected to repeated cycling and extreme temperature changes. This makes them vulnerable to motor winding failures as well as impeller failures. The standard procedure for testing circulators is to take an amp reading on the neutral wire. All circulators will have an amperage rating stamped on the plate. So we need to take the reading off the neutral wire and compare it to the rating plate. Normally we see the amp draw slightly lower than the rating plate value. For instance, a standard Taco 007 is rated at 0.71 amps and normally we will read about 0.68 amps. If the reading is above 
0.71, that circulator has most likely failed and will need to be replaced. Now, if we see a low amp reading, this is usually a sign that the impeller is broken and the motor is spinning, but not the impeller, which also normally indicates the circulator needs replacement. Another factor in water flow for these systems can be sludge or lime scale buildup. These issues would be diagnosed by draining the system and inspecting the waterways of the boiler and piping system. So, now that we have looked at the causes of lack of flow, we need to look at the possibility of a sensor or sensors giving a false reading indicating that the boiler overheated when in fact that is not the case. So we can look at the readings from the temperature sensors in both real time and at the moment of the lockout. If we go to diagnostics then temperatures you will be looking at real time temperatures. You may even see them changing as the boiler is operating. If you go into the lockout history and click on temperatures, you will be looking at the temperatures that were registering at the moment of the lockout. One unique feature of these boilers is that we see a boiler out one and boiler out two temperature and a flu one and flu two temperature. These are dual sensors and will actually create a sensor error fault code if the two readings are more than 10 degrees apart. This makes the likelihood of finding a failed sensor much easier with the dual sensors. For the boiler in and system sensors, these are just single sensors. So to test them, you will need to look at the real-time reading, take an accurate reading of the pipe temperature right next to the sensor, and compare the two. If the pipe temp is reading 110 degrees and the temperature displayed for that same sensor is showing, let's say, 225 degrees, we have found a bad sensor and the cause of our high temperature lockout, which was not actually a high temperature situation at all. Dual temperature sensors can be trusted. Single sensors must be tested. So, after looking at the high temp lockout situation, keep in mind it's just basic troubleshooting that will lead you to the solution. Water is not moving. We just need to find out why. Well, thanks for watching. We hope this video was helpful and be sure to download our Pro Tools app. It has everything you'll need to help diagnose and repair Weill McLean products along with lots of other features.